Welcome, 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 everybody. I'm Director Hitman. Welcome to Uncommon Grounds Podcast. This is episode number one. My first time podcasting, my first time doing any of this type of stuff. For to give you guys a quick little background, my name is Angel O'Hea, a.k.a. Director Hitman. I'm out of Valentine, Pennsylvania. I'm originally from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And um, I just want to talk to you guys about different things in this world, you know? So I figured, why not start a podcast? I want to shout out my brother, Tony Ortiz. He's a local content creator. Um, He gave me the name of an official podcasting website that'll distribute them all over iTunes, Amazon, Spotify, wherever, YouTube, wherever. Sorry about the microphone. Um, So hopefully I get listened to around the world. So the first topic I definitely wanted to start with is I like to know what the world's feeling is about child support. It's a touchy subject for a lot of people, for a lot of men and a lot of females, you know? When most people, when you say the word child support, most people think of a man, but I know a lot of women in my days who pay child support as well. It's just more common for the women to be the primary caretaker in the custody world. Um, unless a man has a decent amount of money or the woman is messed up on drugs or something crazy happening. Nine out of ten, you know what I mean? Um, i give you guys a little backstory. You know, I have a 17-year-old daughter who's about to be 18 in about another month. And I've literally been on child support since she was two years old. Me and her mother... <clears throat> We were in a little relationship, you know, we didn't plan on having a child, but we had a child. So as me at the time being a 25 year old young street cat, um, I tried to take my responsibility, you know, and um, I didn't believe in abortion or anything like that. Neither neither, neither did the mom. And so we went about and we had a, um, a child, you know, we initially hooked up a couple, you know, a couple hanging out, drinking. We worked at the same job, hooked up. Like I said, didn't have any plans, but I got her pregnant. So I had to take the responsibility of being a man. Now, a lot of people don't even do that. But in my heart, I wasn't raising my father. So I had, in my heart, I had a huge responsibility, I felt, to do whatever I had to do to raise this child. Plus, you know, I wanted to have a child, you know what I mean? In my mind, I was like, I gotta do everything my father couldn't do, right? So I was happy, you know? Everything was good, you know? We, at the time, you know, I was 25. I was just about to go out of my mom's house. Um, she was in college. So when she got pregnant, I told her to come with me. You know, let's just save up all her money. Um, at the time, I didn't know anything about raising a child. So I thought we had to save up 50K, you know, stuff like that. So we just literally started saving up as much money as we could. Busting our ass. Doing what we had to do to get ready to have this child. We have the child. Beautiful 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 baby girl shout out to my love Eva Amelia um, we had our child we uh, moved out of my mom's house where we were at at the time we got our own little first little house you know I wish I knew that landlord's name I give him a shout out because we were young uh, we didn't have much established but he gave us a shot you know what I mean oh matter of fact his name was Mr. Dupree Mr. Dupree shout out to you for giving me my, my first little house uh, the mother of my child and my child and so we stayed there for about two years. Um, the mother of my child, she worked all the way till she damn near had the baby. You know what I mean? She worked all nine months. I give her that, man. She busted her ass. She did, she did everything she had to do for us to save money as well. So as soon as we had the child, I was working full time while she was, you know, um, giving birth. And then, you know, the couple of weeks or months after um, childbirth, you know, I worked full time. And then when she was ready to come back to work, we switched. So I stayed on with the child with our baby and she went back to work. She was a bartender, I was a cook. You know, she could make more money um, than I could have made, you know, chefing it up at the time. So that's what we did. And, you know, everything was fine and uh, everything was gone. You know, we were doing a thing and I ain't gonna lie, I don't remember what happened. I think, you know, we were starting to fight. Little thing, see here's the thing about when you have a child with somebody you don't really date, you know, if there's one that stands, you know, you think you know everything about somebody because you work with them a couple years and stuff like that. But everything's different when you move in with somebody, right? So even, even at that, everything was going fine, you know. And then we just started beefing about, like, I don't remember what it was. Stupid-ass shit, man, to be honest with you. So then eventually our relationship started straining, right? She started hanging out all night, whatever. Um, I remember one day she came home at, like, 4 in the morning. 
Uh, I remember my homeboy called me at the time. I was like, yo, I see your baby mom in the club dancing on some dude. And uh, obviously, this is my first episode, so you guys don't know me personally. But I come from like a street gang member background, right? So at that time, of being a 25-year-old gang member street dude, thought it was, you know what I mean? I thought it was the absolute shit, right? I'm like, I'm going to kill everybody. That was my first initial thought, man. A lot of people get angry. It's just what separates people is the people actually go out there and execute those type of crazy thoughts, man. But I was upset, man. If anybody's ever got cheated on or played or... Trust me, man. People feel some way. Then there's other people who don't give a damn. But I care. You know what I mean? I just had a child. I was really upset, to be honest with you, man. I was very, very upset. But um, in the end of it all, our, our relationship strained. So I remember um, we were beefing. I think we stayed together still a little bit even after that. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't beefing no bullshit, but it was close to New Year's Eve. So I was like, well, you know, whatever. She danced or whatever. I didn't know about nothing else. So I wasn't going to assume the worst. But, you know, in my mind, I'm like, yeah, she probably played me. But whatever, right? You know, I just had a child. You know, I wasn't thinking about no crazy. It's just I was like, well, you know, let's give this, you know, try this child, talk it out. So that was New Year's Day then, uh, New Year's Eve or whatever, somewhere around there. And I remember New Year's Day. Um, I come home from work early. I worked in the morning. She was home with the baby. And I remember I came in the house early. She didn't expect me to be there. She was trying to sneak about the house, pack her shit and dip. Her mom and dad were there to help her type of shit. And I remember I was so mad, but I didn't want to freak the fuck out because her mom and dad was there. You know what I mean? I wasn't trying to do no crazy shit. But I just remember I went to them mad as hell, like, let me see the baby. And, you know, I grabbed the baby, gave her kisses because I already knew what time it was. I knew I wasn't going to see her anymore after that. As much as I needed or wanted to see her, you know what I mean? I already knew what time it was, basically. Like, why are you going to be trying to sneak out of the house when I'm not home? Obviously, that means, you know, I ain't gonna, I'm not going to see anybody again. So, that's how the separation happened, right? So, in the end of it all, I just wanted to give you a backstory, right? So, that's what happened. And um, after that, you know, we talked a little bit. You know, she tried to tell me I can come see the baby every other Monday. Like, I was an inmate. She was trying to treat me like I was a goddamn inmate, like it was a jail visit. I wasn't beefing that shit. So I did do it, you know, at the time I didn't have no custody, I wasn't even thinking about that, I was just thinking about still seeing my child, so I did that for a little bit, and then one time I went, they weren't there, she tried to blame it on me, they weren't there, you know what I mean, of course I'm going to see my child every two weeks, you know what I mean, when you only can see your child once for two hours for every two weeks, you hear the type of shit, I should have known, I should have known at that time it was going to be wild for the rest of um, our child's life, right, I should have known from then it was going to be hard, a hard fight for me. But at the end of it all, that's what happened, we started with that, so once, you know, once we couldn't make every other Monday work, you know, at that time, then she went to run and put me on child support. Okay. Go to child support. I don't know if anybody's from Pennsylvania. Our thing was out of Montgomery County. That's by Philadelphia. For those who don't know, it's in Norristown, Pennsylvania. I live in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Lehigh County, Pennsylvania, all right? I didn't know there was differences from state to state and counties and counties when it comes to child support. I just thought it was a number. You ran it. I didn't know. Montgomery County was, uh, I forget the percentage, but the father basically pays mostly everything in Montgomery County, which is cool. That's not even the point, man. That's not even the point. So we went down there. We went We went to child support. I want y'all to guess. Guess how much money I had to pay one child. All right, y'all got some numbers in your head. Did anybody think of $818 one month? I could have jumped off a bridge. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I was freaking out in there. I was like, how am I going to pay this? At the time, I was making like eleven twenty-five cooking. I was like, how the hell am I going to make an extra $818 besides any bills I had? I had a car, a crib. How was I going to pay this? How was I going to pay this? That's all I kept thinking. I hopped in my car. Allentown's about an hour away from Norristown up the Turnpike, right? I hopped in my car. I literally drove by 100 miles and I, I just, I was just losing my mind, y'all. I ain't gonna lie to you, I was losing my mind. I got pulled over. The state trooper probably saved my life. I was losing my mind. I didn't know what to do. But what I did know was I wasn't gonna go to jail for having a child. I knew that wasn't gonna happen. So I got all the way back home. Obviously, I got pulled over. I got a nice little fine. He blessed me because I told him the situation. He's like, I'm gonna make sure you don't get your license suspended. Um, he wasn't gonna put, I forgot. He, he basically trimmed down the miles per hour or something like that. So I didn't get my license automatic, automatically suspended. So I had to pay that little fine, and you know what I had to do, y'all? I worked full-time at Chili's Restaurant. I had to go and get another full-time job at Applebee's. So I'd work from Chili's from 7.30 in the morning to 3 in the afternoon, and then I'd go to Applebee's from 3.30, and I know we were closing out somewhere around midnight back in the day. I used to get out of the latest hell. Sometimes I'd be getting home at 2 o'clock in the morning. 
This is how messed up life was. I mean, I ain't gonna lie, I was smoking a little weed. That's the only thing that was, that was the only thing that was helping me at the time. I was smoking some weed. Listen, I'd get home sometimes one, two in the morning. I literally would have to smoke and literally be in bed by three to get up and be able to function to do those shifts all over again. I did that for about four years. Four years of no life, none, just slaving. Slaving, slaving, slaving to pay the support. I didn't even get the custody yet. That was a couple years after, right? So I'm paying all the support. My baby mom's acting a fool. I can only see the child once every other Monday or something like that. I'm not going to lie, y'all. I didn't know anything about exercising my rights. I didn't know anything about... I was 25. I didn't know shit. You know what I mean? And I definitely didn't know anything about being a parent or how to get how to get my visitation rights or whatever. So we did that really Monday, whatever. And then I remember I just got to the point. I'm like, nah, man. Nobody's going to nobody's gonna control because we don't... Because our relationship didn't work or this or that or it didn't go the way the fairy tale we thought it was going to work that I'm going to be getting dictated to when I'm going to see the child and when I'm not, right? So eventually, you know, with the help of my sister, I'm not going to lie, out of Montgomery County to file for a custody, it was like $208 to do the paperwork, which is crazy as well. You see how these systems are set up sometimes? Why the hell would I have to pay you $280 to be able to get the rights to see my child? That's fucked up. Why would the county be able to make money off that? Well, maybe they feel they make money because they shouldn't be involved. I I understand that as well, right? I guess the county feels they should get paid for being a referee in between people's fucked up relationships, right? So, go into custody, right? Listen to what they did. They gave me jail visit as well. Went into custody. My first custody order was I was able to see her every Sunday. Every Sunday from like 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. At the time, I thought that was a win. You know, I got to see her once a week for those couple hours. I thought that was a win. Well, that went good for the first couple of weeks. Then my baby mom took it upon herself to just fuck the custody order. Missed 19 visits. I went back. Of course, I went back. Why do I have to fight and jump through hoops just to visit when I'm paying and doing everything I got to do? Went back, got every other weekend. Okay, that's cool, man. We ran. I ran with that for a hot minute. I ran with that for most of her life, to be honest with y'all. After I got there every Sunday, I got there every other weekend for, for sleepovers and stuff like that, man. I really felt like, at the time, it's like, why is this system set up like that? You know, hopefully there's smarter people listening to this than me, man. Like, why is the system set up like that? Why? And, and I'll be honest with y'all. I'm one of those people, like, I'm not here to be, like, talking about child support should be abolished, man. I'm not like that because there's too many deadbeats out there who make fathers like me and a lot of other men out there look freaking terrible because they don't pay shit and they don't care about their kids. But there's a lot of us who do. Um, I just always ask myself, why is the system set up like that, man? Like, why do we have to send these checks to our the, to, to any parent, the father or the mother, and they can just spend free will what they want to do with the money. Why, if we have to be uh, put in situations to go to prison for having a child or not paying, I understand, whatever. But why should we have to go to prison for not doing that? But nobody has to prove what they're using the money for. See, my thing is, I don't mind sending $818, but my daughter used to come looking all bummy. Where's the money being spent, man? Why can't the systems give the females a, a card and it can only be used to buy, you know, if your child's eight, you know, uh, you, you know how the, how the children's stores have like the sizes from certain ages and even with teenager stuff. You know what I mean? And, and, and if you're using it for rent, prove that too. There's too much abuse with the system, man. Too much abuse with the system, in my opinion. And... I'll be honest, I never went to jail. I never missed nothing. And even if I, you know, you can't, I couldn't determine how many hours I've worked. You know, the female gets 55% of whatever you make. So there were times, you know, my job was slow. You know, I didn't get my full 40 hours, 45 hours. So, you know, there were times, some months, I couldn't get the 18. It's not my own fault. It's for the reasons of whatever's going on. You know what I mean? But I never missed nothing. I went to jail. I never went to contempt. Very proud of that. A lot of people can't say that, especially for the money. I just told y'all, $818 a month. And then when I finally did go to get it modified through time, it went to 756 And that's what I basically dealt with for 17 years and change. Um, and it's just confusing to me. In the end of it all, y'all, I'm going to go 16 years later. My daughter's now 16. 
She's in high school. I go for modification. I'll be honest with y'all. I used to do music. I used to. I'm. I'm a creative. That's why I'm called director hitman, right? I sacrificed my whole life, my whole life, to pay for my child, which which, which is what we're supposed to do. This is not no ceremonial trophy. I don't need nothing for that. That's my goddamn job, right? But I did have to lay my life to the side. I think any parent who cares, you will lay your life to the side for your child. That's what I did. I stopped music. I stopped everything. When my daughter got to 17, I was slaving the rest of the world. Now I'm basically a manager in this joint, right? I worked my whole career in this business. I bust my ass. I got the keys to the restaurant. I'm open. I'm doing whatever, but I'm miserable. I'm miserable. I do this job sleeping. I do this job with an arm cut off, man. You know what I mean? Like, I did this my whole life. I was miserable, though. It wasn't about the money. It's about life. I quit that job. I left in COVID. I said, you know what, eh? I said, you know what, bro? It's time for you to live for you. You didn't do what you had to do for your child. You pay. Obviously, parenting never ends. You know what I mean? I'm just talking about a basis for child support. I was getting to the end of that. So, on my mind, I'm like, okay, now it's time to do what you need to do in life. Your biggest duty is almost complete. You know what I mean? So I left the job. I grabbed my cameras. I started shooting full time, man. I jumped off the roof. No parachute. Sometimes in life you gotta do that. I realized over time, y'all, job don't care about you. I didn't call off for nine years straight. My car got shot up. I went to work with my car window shot out, y'all. I never called off sick. What the hell is sick? There's no sick. I went to work sick. I did it all, man. I was an essential worker. I did it all. But I didn't live for me. I didn't live for me. You know what I mean? Because I had to sacrifice do what I had to do as a father. Well, at 17, when my daughter's 17, I said, it's time to live, right? So I, my baby mother knows this, right? This is 17 years later, y'all. 17 years later, right? When, when all that stuff was going on there, you know, she worked in the restaurant. She went to nursing school. She turned to a registered nurse. She married a freaking surgeon. I'm going for a modification 17 years later, a support modification. I'm like, can this be low to like 300, 200, something I felt was like, you know, I don't know. I'm not going to say normal. That's not a lot. But remember, as I'm paying this child support, that's not all I'm paying. I got to pay more than that. When my daughter comes to visit, what do you think? I'm calling my baby mom to send me money to get ice cream? What do you guys think? I'm calling my baby mother to send me my daughter's Christmas gift out of the money that I had to send her? No. Not only do you pay child support, but you pay on top of that if you want to have a relationship with your child. The last thing you guys should do is turn around and be like, go ask your mom for the money I sent. That's lame as hell. Your kid will never respect you for that. But the only thing I asked at the end was, can I get my stuff lower? My baby mom hated me so much for custody and stuff like that. We were fighting in custody. Da, 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 da. She hated me for that. I told her none of that was personal. Custody wasn't personal. If I was doing the stuff that, that was going on, I hope she would do the same for me. I was just trying to protect our child, but no. It has to be a status thing or or I'm a big dog. You can't have the child. No, everything should be about the child. I'm not going to get into that because it's nobody's business what was going on with that. But in the end of it all, I was winning in custody. Switch judges. American court systems corrupt as hell. I was winning. Switch the judge. Now I'm losing. It's like it's like politics, right? Maybe one was a Democrat. Maybe one was a goddamn conservative. I don't know. But I went from kicking ass to getting freaking swept out the building. I lost, y'all. I lost. I didn't have the money. I had the money to fight, but I didn't have the money to be the surgeon and the registered nurse. I lost, and, and I think they had powerful friends and powerful places, to be honest with y'all. It was really weird how some of the proceedings went. I went to court one day. It was like it was like the courthouse wasn't even open. We went in the courtroom. The courtroom didn't even have no lights on. The judge was in like street clothes. I still to this day, I feel like something corrupt was going on, and probably something corrupt was going on, because after that day is when I really started losing the cases. They started doing anything. I had solid concrete evidence of criminal charges and da 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 da. They started bringing up my shit when I was 20 years old. They literally started showing shit when I was 20 years old. I'm like, you guys can't be serious right now. What I did at 20 years old does not determine what I am doing as a father. But they did it anyway. Corruption. In the end of it all, y'all, I couldn't get my custody lowered. I mean, I couldn't get my child support lowered. People were bringing in 600000 I was bringing in... 800 a month because I just left my job and basically in child support they said people making $700,000 a year needed needed the support they needed the $700 of somebody making 12 13,000 a year now 
are you people serious? It, it, is the system serious right now? I got paperwork to prove everything I'm saying right now. There's no bullshit being said on this microphone, y'all. Can you guys mentally believe that? That people making 500 to a million dollars needed. I got yelled at in court. How's mom gonna pay for gas? I looked out, are you guys serious? No, they were serious. Millionaires needed money from the cook. Man, kiss my ass, child support system. That's bullshit. Custody, child support, it's all bullshit. I understand things in place, but we need a major revamp in that system. This ain't 19 fucking 50, y'all. There's a lot of corrupt women out there abusing the system, y'all. When is America going to do something about that? When are we going to go back in and revamp this whole system? When are we going to hold the other parent who's getting the money accountable for what they're doing with the money? That's what I'm waiting on, y'all. You know? I hate it. I had to start the Uncommon <laughs> uncommon podcast, Uncommon Grounds podcast like this, y'all. But I had to dump, jump deep into the ocean. Because I see, I was just on Facebook the other day looking at a post where mad guys were sitting there defending themselves like, oh, I got to pay this bitch 600 a month. That's all she's getting from me. And I had to comment like, you motherfuckers are lame as hell, man. How could you say that? How could you type that? And I wrote exactly what I said a couple minutes ago. What are you going to tell your child on Christmas? Go ask your mom. Because you already know what the mom's going to do. Oh, no, go ask your dad. He's supposed to have your gift. And then you're going to be the lame. Then your child's going to hate you when you grow up. So really think about that stuff, gentlemen, and females out there who pay support, who claim that amount of money you send is, is what you're supposed to send. That ain't right. You might have to do like me. You might have to go fucking sacrifice your life and get two jobs. If you care, that's what you do. If you got love for your child, that's what you do. If you got any type of morals, if you got any type of standards... If you got any type of motherfucking pride, you do whatever you got to do to get that money and be in your child's life. Yeah, y'all. These are the type of topics I'm going to bring to y'all. I hate it had to start like this. And, you know, if anybody on this podcast, if you guys know me personally, you know, I'm not even the type of person to express this type of shit. But this is why I started this podcast to talk. And I'm going to have guests on eventually, y'all. But I'm starting with me. I'm starting with topics. I'm starting with this type of stuff. I wanted to put this out there to the world. I am Director Hitman. This is Uncommon Grounds Podcast. And I just want to thank everybody for listening to me ramble on. I don't know how this podcast stuff works. I'm hoping when you see this stuff, you'll be able to leave your comments. Or I don't know. I don't know how any of this stuff works. But I'm hoping eventually I'll see some type of feedback on this topic. When I come on on, ep on, um, on episode number two, I have a different topic. You know, I'll switch it up every time. If I do see some type of feedback from people eventually, I don't know how or where, I will make another episode for those um, to respond back to people. Other than that, I want to say God bless everybody. If you're not religious, blessings to you as well. It doesn't have to be in a typical structure of religion. Just I hope everybody does well. I hope you do what you got to do. I appreciate everybody who took the time out to listen to me. I am, again, once again, Director Hitman, and this is Uncommon Grounds Podcast. Let's go.